new board member for the Clinton Historical Society and uh, Language Center technologist up at Hamilton College. Um, recent transplant to Clinton from New York City, started off in Whitesboro, a little bit about me. Uh, so hi, thank you all for coming. It seems amazing. Uh, we're gonna turn it over to uh, Dick Williams to go over uh, the architectural stylings, but just so you know, um, the way we're treating Q&A, you have some options. If you feel comfortable using the chat function, you can uh, type your questions in there and I'll read them and shout out to Dick. Or if you wanna just pipe up, say, hey, I have a question. Um, we have enough people, thankfully, that we can't fit everyone on one screen. So we're not gonna be able to see any hand waving or camera things. And I think to make it um, really uh, go as smoothly as possible and as graphics intensive, once we start the presentation, if you wanna just go ahead and mute yourself in the lower uh, left-hand corner of your Zoom screen. And if you wanna turn off your uh, camera as well, sometimes that helps with um, how fast things upload and download in my experience. So just to keep the video running as smoothly as possible, um, muting and turning your camera off is great. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mike. Let me let me dip, dip in here a little bit. Uh, might cover some of the uh, housekeeping chores here. Um, again, uh, Dick has asked. Dick uh, Williams has asked that all questions be held till the end. If you want to put them in the uh, chat queue, we'll try to catch them. Try to get our attention. We do have about fifty people who signed up for this, so it's uh, we're we're not only learning some of this technology, but we've had a pretty good. And we will be recording. This is being recorded. It will be uh, placed on our YouTube, uh, Clinton Historical Society YouTube channel. Um, and there's a link for that on our website. And uh, if you don't have it, you can always drop us a note on our Gmail. Um, the uh, a couple of uh, a couple of things here. Uh, Mar uh, February. This is just a part one of a parter on the architectural styles uh, in in the Clinton area. Uh, Dick has a wealth of information, a wealth of pictures, and he'll be covering several different styles of architecture. And to make it so that uh, everybody gets the most out of it, we're actually breaking it into two pieces. So you'll notice when you got your, your Zoom link, that uh, there was actually a second date there, February 21st for part two. So uh, make a note, same time. Uh, we also have coming up on March 14th, the Tower family will be our next program for uh, the Tower family of Waterville. Wade Lollier, a recent transplant to, um, to Waterville will be uh, doing that program. And then on April 11th, we have uh, Bill Huther will be talking about home deliveries. You thought home deliveries were with uh, um, Uber Eats and stuff like that. Well, guess what? It's been around for a while. And then in May, we have an extra add-on program we're going to be doing with Christian Goodwillie, who will be talking about the Barnabas Ponds uh, house uh, architectural style. So you can, we're getting our architectural um, uh, daily dose. Here. Uh, let me do a quick introduction to uh, Richard Williams, Dick Williams, uh, He'll be your guide for what will arguably be perhaps one of the more comfortable February walking tours you'll take of uh, Clinton. Um, uh, Dick is a former mayor of Clinton from 1987 to 97, a village trustee from 76 to 87. He's been a member of the Clinton Historical Society since 68 and has served as editor for the newsletter uh, from 2000 until recently. And he was named the official historian for uh, both the village of Clinton and the town of Kirkland in 2000. Uh, he's also a contributing columnist uh, for the Clinton Courier from 75 to 2015 and now contributes uh, various weekly columns on local history uh, in the area. He has written or edited 12 books on, on local history. So as the saying goes, Richard, it's yours. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jim, and welcome everybody to the Clinton Architectural Styles of the 1800s. We're going to go through this 
get about an hour and 10 minutes, so you'll have plenty of time to see the, the uh, Super Bowl later on today. So let's begin. This is part one today, as Jim said, part two is on the 21st. And I appreciate Jim and John Brady and the other director, Mike Revenow, who's running the controller for this, for this meeting. Okay, here we go. This is an old log home. I don't know where it is, but it might've been here back in the 18... Uh, slideshow okay. is, oh, there we go. There we go, there we go. Okay. Okay. So I guess we're back in business. I appreciate everybody waiting for 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> we're high tech here, very high tech. Anyhow, welcome to Architecture Styles in Clinton in the 1800s. And thanks to the three names you see on the screen for helping me out here. As I said earlier, I think maybe you didn't hear me. Uh, these are a couple of pictures of a couple of log homes that might be someplace in the area. I really don't know where they are, but I thought I'd throw them in here to begin with. But this is a home, not right here, it's down in Herkimer. I want just to set the stage here. As you know, Clinton was settled in March of 1787. So there were no homes, no frame homes in Clinton in 1787, but right east of us near Herkimer, the Palatines had come up from the Schoharie Valley in the, the mid 1750s, and they were settling in the Herkimer area. This is a house that still stands on Route 5 in Her uh, Herkimer, east of, uh, actually west of Herkimer, it's called the Palatine Home. There was a church back in 1770 on Route 5, also near Herkimer, west, east of Herkimer. And so there were, there were buildings, big buildings, as, as a few years before Clinton was settled, just east of us, about 20 miles. And Johnson Hall, the home of Sir William Johnson, the Indian agent, was built in 1760. That's in Johnstown. So I, I just want you to know that there were things to the east of us, but not too much right where we are right now but we'll get to that in just a moment. Also on Route 5S, there was a Fort Herkimer church built before the Revolutionary War also, still there today. And the General Herkimer home built in 1764. So there were people just the east of us, but Clinton had no permanent settlements or Kirkland at that time, except this little cottage, which was Samuel Kirkland's cottage and it's now up on Hamilton College. It was originally down on Harding Road. Then it was moved down by the Ruskiny Creek and about 17, or about 1850s, it was moved up on the hill near the cemetery. And, and finally in the 1920s to where it is now next to Buttermer Hall, uh, one of the central quadrangles of Hamilton College. So this is an old clapboard building, one of the first in the area that has survived. Here's a close up picture of it up on the hill. Okay, styles of homes in Clinton. As, you, as we just said, Clinton began 1787. There were a few log homes in Forest Schuyler, which is Utica. Ludum Blodgett, in the fall of 1786, started a crude house at the park in Kellogg Street, according to the early accounts, which was elm bark and uh, no floor windows or doors. I can't imagine spending winter in that place, but anyhow, that's what the old accounts claim. The crude huts were, had crotch sticks with the poles laid from crotch to crotch, bark siding and for the roofing. In 1787, seven families came here and there were a lot of trees around here. Maples, ash, elm, birch, beech, basswood, butternut, pine, spruce, oak, wild cherry. And the first year we did have a, a grist mill down on Ruskiny Creek at College Street. And the second year, a sawmill. So the beginning of frame wood homes begins the next year, 1788. I'm not sure what the first ones looked like. These might have been some around here. I don't know where these came from, but uh, they're not too good shape at this point, obviously. But this home right here, we date from 1793. It's up on College Hill. It's the Anderson Cottage. The Anderson family lived there until about 1900, and it's now owned by the college. This is the south side, and this is the east side. It's used or has been used by Hamilton for a faculty housing. I'm not sure what it's used for right now but it's probably one of the oldest homes up on the hill and in the town of Kirkland. Some architectural terms. I'm gonna give you a little primer here on some of the terms I'll be mentioning as we go. Gambrel roof, this is a double pitched roof like a barn with the lower slope is more steep than the top slope. A pediment is a triangular section many times on the facade or the front of the building. And the word lintel is usually over a, over a window or a door. It could be wood, it could be iron, it could be stone. 
So I'll use those terms as we go. Gambrel roof, a pediment, and lintel. The gable is a section of a roof at the end of the pitch roof usually. The cornice is molding at the top of a wall. A pilaster, you'll see several pilasters. They're support columns attached directly to the front walls. And there's a, be <coughs> a beautiful example of a Palladian window that you'll see too. So federal style architecture is our first style. Clinton is really blessed. We have several homes still standing. They all weren't built back in, in the 1790s, but they, they are still in pretty good shape. And you're gonna see some of these features as we go through. A formal symmetrical facade. In other words, both sides look the same. The gable ends with sometimes the elliptical windows, a flush boarded walls. In other words, no overlapping like many clapboards are. A gable or hip roof, two-story pilasters, a prominent entrance sometimes, fan-shaped windows, side lights on the front door, a graceful effect with sometimes large windows. And I must add here that there are all, all sorts of variations of the federal style, so you'll, you won't see all these things every place. The Burns Agency on West Park Row and North Park Row is a good example of 1790s federal style architecture. Notice the symmetry, two, two windows here, two here, a door, a little light over the door. But what I don't understand, I never did understand why the, the door is on the south side. There was no road down through here, there's a driveway. But this door is on the south side and the, the road is on the east side like this door is. This house on uh, Kirkland Ave dating from 1793 owned by Charlie Baker years ago and, and, and Pond, Barnabas Pond who Jim told you will be the subject of uh, Christian Goodwillie's talk in April. Uh, this is where he lives on, on Kirkland Ave. A beautiful style, French uh, rather federal style architecture notice Little variation here. There's no no window over the door, but there are two two side lights. Here's the same Baker House before it was painted, uh, probably in the in the 1980s. Right down on Marvin Street or Marvin Street and College Street, rather, we have the Marvin House. Osias Marvin came here, bought lots of land. What's now Marvin Street of all things? That was his farm, and he built this house from 1803, we understand. And again, it's, uh, it's symmetrical. It has basically, you can slice it down here and have two equal sides. The front door does not have the other feature that I just talked to told you about because every house does not have all these features. But it does have usually a symmetrical facade, as I said, a hip roof. It might have some pilasters, which I'll we'll show you in a moment. And this is a house up on Bristol Road, the Rogers Peach Galloway House. Notice the fan window over the door and the two side lights. And this is the back, this is how the house looks from the air with, with the farm out back. This was the old Rogers farm up on Bristol Road. Right here in Franklin Springs, we have a good example of the federal style. I'm not sure what year this was built, but it's uh, right at the corner of Post Street at Route 12B. And it has up in the up in the gable, it has the elliptical window, which is quite common. This house up on uh, Bristol Road also is the Nathaniel Griffin house. He was one of the early earliest settlers here. In the 1790s, he bought land from George Washington and George Clinton, our, our first president and first governor. And he built this house in the 1790 period. This is from a lithograph from a 1880s map or atlas rather. Today it looks like this. And I want to point out this, this, there's six pilasters. These columns right here are called pilasters. They're support columns, but they're attached right to the front of the building. Unlike a Greek column, which we'll see shortly, which you could walk around. You can't walk around these pilasters because they're attached right to the building. And there are six here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And look at this fan window, beautiful, side lights, wonderful. And they call these, these sections a bay. So there's one, two, three, four, five bays in this house. And there's a nice elliptical window up in the cornice, up in the gable. So this is, it has many of the features with the two chimneys, of course. I'm not sure how many fireplaces, probably several. Here's a picture from down by the road of the house that's still owned by the Heinz family. 
This is Nathaniel Griffin's uh, tombstone in the old burying ground where he was buried with his daughter and wife. Now this is a house you all have driven by many times and maybe had lunch in it or dinner or had a drink in it sometime over the years or gone to a lecture more recently. This is the, the Othniel Williams estate started in 1825. They built the, the federal, this side first. And uh, the, the books I read, they, they call this the federal style. Although it doesn't have the same roof features. This is a more Georgian style, they say in the books. But this has the federal door. So this is a mixture, you might say. It's got the nice fan light, it's got the two side lights. And it has a flat roof, which is not typical of a federal style here. There should be a, a federal style roof here, but there isn't. And there is no, there's a flat roof here for the Georgia style. Now this edition here was put out in, in the 19, early 1950s. But notice uh, the door is a good example of a federal door. And this tells a little bit about the, uh, about the mansion Othniel Williams, he, his son, actually his son Othniel built it because the father died and he was a Hamilton College alum and so forth. And but since 2007, this has been the Alexander Hamilton Institute for the Study of Western Civilization. And this marker will go out front this year, I understand. Here's an old picture of the inn before the, before the addition here and before the one out back. This is how it looked for many years. Notice it was the Alexander Hamilton Inn. 1945, notice these old cars. These are about 1938 Chevys and Oldsmobiles because in 45, there were no new cars there. Everybody, everybody was driving an eight, nine, 10 year old car after the war. But notice the pilasters here, they're more visible here. Here's one, here's one, one on the end. And these little, like little eyebrows over the windows here and the porch. Now keep your eye on this porch because it, dis it disappears over the next few years. Here's how it looked in the 30s when it was still in the Williams family. A nice, nice example. This is how it looked when Grover Cleveland was here back in Clinton Centennial in 1887. But they took the porch down because there was a fire. There was a fire in the, uh, the 19, the 19, the uh, 90s period, 19, 1997, or 90, I'm sorry, 1987 or 88. I forgot the exact year. But the porch never was rebuilt. The porch was here and uh, the fire started in, in this section. But notice again that the, the, uh, the fan light and the two side lights. And here's back up several years ago when it was painted yellow when the porch was still on. Down on College Street, we can find some more federal examples. This is the house at 26 College Street, just before the, the uh, driveway into the Dollar General Store. Again, there are all sorts of variations. Local carpenters, local architects made lots of variations of all these, all these styles. Here's over an old Kirkland Ave, uh, a very nice example. It has, it has a, a light over the door, but it's not a fan light. And there's no, no side lights that I can see here. But a good example with an extended back area. There is, there is a little light over the door, a little, a little window here. Yeah. Now I'm showing you this picture now because it, it doesn't really fit into any of my categories. It's 96 College Street. Notice the, the uh, symmetrical situation. Notice the elliptical, the window up here and also here. And it has two, two story porches. So this is quite different from a typical federal style. And most of them don't have these towers. This is more of a style you're gonna see in two weeks, the Italian villa style. But I'm putting this in here because I didn't know where else to put it, but it's quite a, quite a noteworthy building. Right now this tower is gone, but the, the rest looks the same. And up in Barneville, we have this great example of federal style with a nice pediment here with an oval window. That's, on, that's still 1809, still, uh, still going strong up on, Main Street in Barnabelle. Notice the front door, which is a main feature in the symmetry. Hello. And also on Harding Road, we have other examples. I gotta take a little drink of water. This is the, it says here, Samuel Kirkland House. That's an error. 
This is from a, 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 a book on architecture years ago. It was John Kirkland, a nephew. Notice here the pilasters, here, 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 the, the three bays, the little eyelids. Look at the door, the classical, this is a classical federal door with the fan light, the two side lights. Has an addition over here. Uh, this picture taken a few weeks ago, still in good shape, looks good. The elliptical window up on top. And that situation up on Lombard Road, the it used to be the, the Re Charlie Reader's house, but it's a good example. It's a farmhouse, was a farmhouse of that style. Look at the, the elliptical window up in the gable here. Two big chimneys down on College Street, 139 College, has a, has a variation of the federal side. It has the elliptical window, it has the, the door with two side lights and a straight across top light. And it has what I would say four bays, one, two, three, four, and the center one, I guess would make five bays if you count the center one. But the side ones are less wide than the big one here. The Harding home up on Harding Road, this is from an old picture. This is a, a better picture of it today. And federal style, again, doesn't have a fan light, but it has the two side lights. It has this Palladian window. Here's a beautiful example of a Palladian window. There's not too many around the buildings. There's one up on the, the Senate House on Chestnut Street, or the former Senate House. But there are three part windows with a large center arch at the top, yep, and two narrower side windows. So if you see this someplace in your travels, you'll impress everybody by saying, that's a Palladian window. You'll be experts. Now back to one Utica Street, uh, this is, an early uh, federal style house. This, this, this was a garage for many years. So, so, so this is the main part. But look at this window. It has, it has four columns, four Greek columns, which is another variation. It has windows here and here and a horizontal window across the top. And the, the clapboards are flush. They're not overlapping. Now this has been put on later, but the original clapboards are on the front. They're, they were flush. And this house was built by Amaziah Stebbins, the early Clinton landowner and merchant. And Louisa Barker lived here while she was head of the female department of the Clinton Liberal Institute for a few years. Again, the door as it looks today. Now, right on East Park Row, we have a federal style architecture. This is the former Arful Lodger. And uh, it's been this good shape now. Uh, up in the gable, there's no elliptic, but there's a, a different style window. Here it is from the other, other angle. Now, keep, the, keep those two pictures in mind. Keep those two pictures in mind, because the next picture is going to shock you. There's the same building. Would you recognize it? Well, the windows are the same, but it's got no porch now. It has, this is a, a built-out bay window on the second floor. So at some point, I don't know when, but before my lifetime, this has been taken off, this has been taken off. And for many years, there were two Greyhound, oh, they're there right now, they're, they're, there's the two Greyhounds. You see them there? They're kind of hard to see in this picture, but for many years, there were two Greyhound metal statues of dogs right here on the porch. That's 9 East Park Row. I don't know where the Model A Ford is right now, but it's not there anymore. Okay, moving up to the hill for more federal style, we have, of course, the chapel, the famous chapel, 1827, uh, built by Philip Hooker, or designed by Philip Hooker of Albany, a prominent landmark for the college and sort of the iconic picture. Also on the hill is the Root Homestead across the street on the, on the south side of College Hill Road. Uh, the rear section of this building starts in 1800. This is the front section here. This was about 1810, I understand. This was an inn for many years for students. But again, notice the pilasters. Uh, of course, there's one more over here. The, the side lights. I don't think there's a fan window on this one. Again, the uh, iconic chapel. And on Kirkland Ave. Do you recognize this building on Kirkland Ave? How about this one? Look the same? Minus the trees, I guess, right? 1815, this was, uh, I call it a double federal style. Uh, it had the side light on the door. 
Uh, it was built as the Royce Seminary. It was one of the Clinton's seminaries for ladies. This building was back in the 1800s, but it's about 1850. Now it's a private residence. It has three or four apartments. I'm not sure how many. And just so you know that other areas around here had federal style. This is the General Floyd House up in Western, north of Rome. He signed the Declaration of Independence and he lived in New York City most of the time, but he spent his summers up here and uh, he died in 1821. Now, this is another old house. This is not a federal style house, I want you to know. But it's one of the older ones in Clinton and Kirkland. This is on, on Kirkland Ave, just beyond, uh, just before Lombard, or Robinson Road, I mean. And this section was the original section here, 1805, Jesse Curtis. Bought the land here and built this a 16 by 16, this building was. Then he put on this addition, or somebody, I'm not sure who put on the addition over the years, but this was added later on. You can tell by looking at the, the, the uh, foundation. This foundation stone is much different from this stone. So this is a very old house, not federal style, but I wanted to show it to you because it, it does date from 1805. And behind the house, this has all been torn down. This was the barn. So where he kept his cows and horses and whatever. And he was a milkman, George Brady, called the Brady House. Okay. Now I put this picture in. This is 72 College Street. It doesn't really fit exactly federal, but it does in a way. It has the sort of the symmetry, but it has a flat roof, which we'll talk about next time in more, more detail. But I wanted to put this in right now just to whet your appetite. We're going now to Greek Revival, the next style came into Clinton or came into this country in the 1820 period, 1850. And they have, unlike pilasters, they have freestanding columns, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. They usually have triangular pediments, gable ends, and cornices might have wood over the doors or windows. Now, if any of you recall from your, if you're my age, you had this back in 10th grade world history, all about the three kinds of columns in, in the Greeks had, Doric, Ionic and Corinthian, remember that? Very good. This, this is the Doric, which is quite plain, as you see here, and they sometimes have this fluting all the way up and down. I can't tell if these are, but it's fluted at the top. 700 BC. Then they have the Ionic ones. Ionic, uh, the, the Ionic columns are, by the way, named after uh, a sea. There was an Ionian sea between Italy and Greece off the Mediterranean. Uh, this is where that name came from. And uh, these fancy end, end scurly cues here, what do you want to call them? Scroll shaped ornament on the capital. This is called the capital of the, of the column, this part, the capital. So this was 600 BC. Then they went to the Corinthian. Corinth, of course, is a, is a city, and there's a Corinthian sea too off the, off the Mediterranean. Notice how fancy the Corinthian columns are. And we have examples of all three right here in Clinton, New York. What do you think of that? The Creek Revival also has simple ornamentation, symmetry sometimes, not always, and simple surfaces, maybe pilasters. Again, there are various variations. Uh, people change things all, over, all around. Now, of course, this is the Parthenon, upon the Acropolis in Greece, 44 BC. Still looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, those would be Doric. In case you're wondering, they're not Ionian, they're not Corinthian. 447 BC, that makes it quite old. Okay, back to Clinton. 65 College Street has a nice Greek revival. And these, I'd say, would be the Doric. And again, the, the pediment right here. This addition was put on later, I'm sure. I don't know exactly when. Across the street, just about a 74. Now, these are what? I can't hear you, but yeah, I'm sure you'd all tell me Ionic, right? And But uh, look at this, the corner, the two outside ones are what? They're Doric. So they've got Doric, Ionian, Ionian, and Doric. And of course, the pediment up here, the triangular pediment. Here's a picture from a, another angle. This, this edition was put on five, six years ago, a two-story edition. Well, a good example of... Greek Revival and uh, 13 Chestnut Street. This was the home that was built uh, about 1910. Be but before that, between 1851 and 1880, the Clinton Liberal Institute for those girls 
that's where Louisa May Barker taught. Uh, this was the big structure up on the corner around the end of William Street. And it was, it was bought by St. Mary's Church in 1910, taken down. And uh, this building was built at that time. Now these are what? These are, I would say, these are Ionian, right? Notice this bracketing. And also notice the semicircle window up in the pediment here. So there's all sorts of variations. But it's a good example of uh, this period. Here it is today, a few weeks ago when the, the Christmas wreaths were there. You get a better look at this window. And the door has, the, the, the door has from the federal style, they have the, the side lights and the fan window. And they have this up in the pediment. So you might say this is not classical Greek revival because the door looks sort of federal. Well, that's the way local carpenters, local architects, they did these things. There's no problem with that. This is 32 William Street. It doesn't have anything up in the pediment, but it has, again, it has the two outside ones are, are Doric and the in, inside ones are Ionic. So it shows the, those two examples. And over here, you have the two Ionic ones. This is over on Route 5 in Kirkland. These are, uh, again, these are all Ionic columns. And up in Franklin Springs, you have another Greek Revival house with uh, one, two, three, four. And these are the uh, Ionic ones again. Nothing up in the pediment here. Over in Kirkland, uh, the former Presbyterian Church is a good example of Greek Revival built in the 1840s. Uh, this house on uh, 65 Kirkland Ave has the Corinthian style. Notice, here's a closer, closer up look here. So this, this, uh, this family decides to, uh, or the, the builder rather, decided to put these fancy Corinthian style pediments up here, on, or capitals rather on the top. And again, the, the pediment here, and I'm not sure when the addition was put on. And in Utica, we have this famous landmark, which is also a Doric style, Utica State Hospital, which is sitting over on Court Street, uh, wasting away, but it still is a wonderful example. This was built in the 1830s. So this was right at the peak of the, or the, or the beginning of the peak of the uh, Greek Revival style on Court Street in uh, Utica. Here's a blurry picture, it's not your screen, it's a blurry picture of, of the entrance. Okay, I went very fast. I wanted to get done by three o'clock and I guess I went too fast, but anyhow, we do have time for questions. Here's the, here's the building over on Route 5 in Kirkland I talked about in a minute, but this will be uh, followed by part two on the third 21st. And I did go quite fast, so maybe there are some questions. So if you can uh, write them in to, on that little icon at the bottom, if you wish to, or call it, call me later or whatever you want to do. But that's the end of the part one. And I appreciate your here. I appreciate your patience when we had some technical problems at the beginning, but we got it all straightened out. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a few things about Clinton architecture. And if you go through many villages throughout central New York, you're going to see many of the same things. We are not, we are not unique in that aspect. Most villages, most cities have all these kinds of architecture if they were settled uh, before the 1830s. Okay, is there any questions from Jim or Mike or anybody? I'm, I'm not seeing anything, Dick, in the chat, but maybe- Excuse me, I have a question. Please. Dick, this was fantastic. Thank you, Megan Burdick. Um, the question I would have is there, are there any prominent architects that sort of did more building than others that we should know about? You mean in the village or well, of course, Philip Hooker designed Hamilton College Chapel. He's probably the most prominent one. Uh, but in terms of designing these homes, uh, there were carpenters books of designs back then. There was a Downing book and so forth. And I don't know if there was a Greek revival book, but I assume there was, but they, they published these books of designs in the 1800s. And then I, my hunch is that local carpenters got these books and built them as they saw fit. They put some variations on them. 
or they built them just as they should. So this is what happened. Well, there weren't too many architects building homes in Clinton back in 1810. Uh, there was, the so churches had some architects. And I, I forgot the architect of the stone church, but I can find out. But he did, he did not build homes too. He just built uh, commercial and church buildings. So I don't think I have an answer for you for that. Anything else? Yeah, I got one, Dick, here from uh, Lynn. Uh, she asked if the college offers a tour of any of the historic and history of its build their buildings. So, well, they they don't allow any visitors on, on campus now because of the ep epidemic. But uh, I'm sure once they open up again, they would be happy to to walk around with a student. We did have a program here at the Clinton Historical Society about six seven years ago. Steve Bologna who is now the mayor of Clinton, was then the supervisor of buildings and grounds up there. And he did a very nice slideshow about the buildings in Hamilton back eight, nine years ago for one of our Sunday meetings. So uh, I don't know if he would do that again for us, but if there's enough interest, we could maybe could acquire and have him do his, do his program again. But he did a nice job talking about the old campus and the Brooklyn campus and so forth, and who, who built them and when they were built and how they've been modified and some have been torn down or others are built on that site. So that's up on the hill, but I don't know of any walking tour. I say when the virus ends, you might want to call them up and inquire. Right now, I doubt they're going to do any tours. Um, the Landmark Society in Utica had walking tour there about two years ago in the summer. It was one of their Monday night series and it was really great. Well, they have a, uh, we do have at the society a, a, a brochure put out by the, the Landmark Society of some of the prominent uh, old homes like you've just seen today in Clinton that you can walk around by yourself. We don't have many copies of that, but we, maybe we can get some more if you're interested. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Uh, we got one more in the chat uh, regarding the uh, building materials. Were most of the building materials sourced locally and were the Greek columns of the revival style also crafted locally? Well, I'm not the expert on Greek columns, let me tell you. I can tell you that the, the foundation stone is, is, there are a lot of local quarries in this area and that's, that's where that came from. And the sawmill on the Rishini Creek at College Street I assume it was very busy turning out lumber, but I can't tell you if the columns were where they bought them. I don't know. My, my guess is they might not have been bought here. They might have been bought elsewhere and put together here. I just don't know. I wish I had an answer for that one. And I got another one, Dick, here. Does the village have any restrictions about making renovations or changing the historic homes? Well, it depends if they're in the historic preservation district or not which is basically the center of the village, it goes down to Mulberry Street on Utica Street, goes down to, uh, it goes up Fountain Street quite a ways, up William Street, up Marvin Street, down College Street, not all the way. There's a map in the village office that shows the, the district. So if you don't know where you live exactly in terms of the district, you can find out very quickly. And the answer to your question, can you make changes? There's a commission that would have to have a, a look at your proposal if it's, if it's the facade. In the early 1990s, I was the mayor of the village and I wrote this ordinance with Bob Schaefer. And uh, the whole intent was to keep the appearance of the village the same now as it will be in several years. So if you were walking around Clinton in the, the year 2080, it might look basically the same. Uh, now this is, this is not to say we can't change some things, we, but it does not control how you paint your house. That's, that's, not, that's no, that's no, uh, nothing that the uh, commission has to say about. But if you're gonna put a new porch on, take an old porch off, put a big addition out back or something, if it can be seen from the street, it's facade appearance. And that's the basic, uh, the basic rule. So the uh, commission should be contacted if you're interested in making any major facade reservations. And I stress facade, if you're gonna put a new bathroom in, don't worry about it. You gotta get a building permit probably, but you won't have to go to the commission. Anything else? Anybody else? And, and uh, please do mark your calendars for the 21st, same time. And uh, now they've worked the kinks out, things should go better. And I want to thank you. The, I want to thank Dick for his expertise and patience and Mike for his assist. And uh, 
everybody else for their uh, patience and consideration. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, Bye -bye. You. thank you. Thanks very much.